Hi, welcome to the uh, second video. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and open up Blender. And as soon as you have Blender open, you're gonna go ahead and access the scripting tab. The scripting tab will be up at the top menu all the way at the end. And if you don't see that menu there, you can click on this plus right here and go to the general area and then go ahead and uh, select the scripting tab right there. So after I select the scripting tab, the layout's gonna change a little bit. You're gonna have your perspective view over here. And over here, you're gonna have the outline, which tells you everything you need to know about what's in the scene. So over here, you see I have this cube selected. And over here, the cube is actually selected. Now I want you to keep your eyes on this light here. If I select that light, I'm sorry, this light here. That light then becomes selected, and that's the camera, sorry. So I select the camera, and you see the camera selected. So everything that's in the scene, whatever you add in the scene, will show up here. And this is just uh, part of the scene that we had when we first were in, let's say, the modeling view or any other view that we use. This is the 3D modeling view. When we go to the scripting, however, it pushes it over to the side, and then it gives you this, uh, this area over here along with the coding because we want to be able to see what's in the scene while also coding at the same time. So next you have the data blocks um, uh, view here layout and then you have the properties layout here. So let's say if I select on this cube here the properties of that cube would be here including other attributes and things and effects that I'm able to add onto it would also be here. So the thing about Blender is that it's highly editable, meaning I can change these tabs to anything. If I were to select on this little tab right here, I can change this view to any view that I want. I can change this view, this 3D view, to something like the properties view if I want. And you can also stretch and squeeze the different uh, components here to actually get a better view. So because our primary goal is to actually be able to use Python within you know, uh, Blender, we want to be able to understand this main part right here. If we were just uh, modeling or something like that, this is the view we would be in because we don't have to really worry about scripting or anything. But when we were worried about scripting, here is the view we're looking at. And right now we don't see all the options here, but if I were to click on new and start a new document, the first thing you'll notice is that I get this line one here. I get this um, area where I'm going to type here. And I also get this over here highlighted to where it's saying how I can show the line numbers. I can also use word wrap and I can also go over here and I can use syntax highlighting. So when there's keywords or something like that, it becomes highlighted. So let's say I type some code here. If I wanted to run that code, I just go ahead and click on this run button. And let's say if I don't want this script, I can just go ahead and hit the X and unlink that. And now I have a blank uh, canvas once again. So let's take a quick look at how we can manipulate the 3D view over here. If I use the middle mouse button and I scroll it, I can zoom in and out. If I hold the middle mouse button down and move the mouse, I can actually rotate around the object. I can also scroll in and out by holding control down and then moving the mouse, uh, holding the middle mouse, mouse button down with control and moving the mouse left, right, up and down. If I go here and I hold shift down and then hold the middle mouse button, I can actually pan the view. So I'm going to sh hold shift down and hold the middle mouse button down and I can pan left, right, up and down. Uh, the shortcut keys is the best way to do this. It, you can use these things here on the these icons here on the right hand side. So here you can use pan. So I'm just clicking pan and then I'm go ahead. I mean I'm zoom and I'm uh, zooming in and out. Here is pan. I can just hold pan down and then use that. And I can go ahead and toggle between the camera, which is the camera that you see here. This camera here. So if I were to click on this, I'm toggling between that camera's view and my perspective view here. I can also toggle the perspective, the perspective uh, orthographic view uh, by using this grid right here. So let's say if I wanted to see everything in the y-axis, I can just click on the y-axis and it'll move to 
the Y axis and each axis I click on using this gizmo here will automatically shift the camera or the view, not the camera, shift the view to that axis. And then you can just go ahead and scroll whichever way you want from there. So a good idea would be to actually start you know, navigating throughout this scene just so you can kind of get used to being able to see what you need to see when you need to see it, specifically after you are done coding something. And right below all of this we have the Python console that we automatically have installed inside of, um, you know, uh, inside of um, uh, Blender and the version of Python we have here so you can see what version you're using and you can even try it out if you if you just go ahead and type one plus one that's actually a, a command in python it'll give you the result of that so you know python is working exactly like it should just like the 3d view is really good to use shortcuts python is also good uh when it comes to using shortcuts and um we'll be going over a few shortcuts that you can use inside of python as well uh, you also have these uh, menus up here to actually be able to do things with the console window. For instance, I've already typed that in there. And if you can imagine if I had a lot of stuff typed in here that I really don't want to see anymore, I can go here to console and then I can clear that line. I can delete the previous word. Uh, I can use these shortcut keys to do all that. So all these shortcut keys actually apply. And then I'll, or I can just hit clear all and then I get right back to where I started. So before we start doing anything in in Python, you, you should know though that automatically built into this module are these classes here. So we don't actually have to include these inside of any of our code because it's already included within uh, this version of Python that is specific to Blender. Normally these are in, um, let's say like if you were in C Sharp or C++, you can see these as classes. So I usually use the words classes, but in the realm of Python, they use, they, they call these modules, but basically they're classes. The other thing you want to look at is when we actually start writing our code, they have convenience variables here that specifically we need in order to do a lot of things inside of Blender. And one of those is uppercase C, meaning uh, BPY context, and you'll see why we need that a lot. And uppercase D equals BPY dot data, and you'll understand why we need that uh, in a few minutes. And finally, be below all of this, we have our info editor. So for every action you take inside of Blender, well, not exactly every action, but a lot of actions you take inside of Blender, specifically here inside of our 3D view, um, it will log that inside of this editor here. It'll also log any errors or anything like that. So if you're coming from like say like a C sharp or visual basic background, you're looking at this like the console window or the um, output window, not the console window, but the output window or the console out output, something like that, or a debug window. You can see it as that. Uh, and it's not necessarily just run when you run or execute the application. It's always running because it's always inside of Blender. It's actually reacting to whatever Blender does or responds to. So the good thing about this area is how we're going to use it as a shortcut. We're going to use this to actually learn the code in Blender, but also code Python in Blender um, and make it do what we want, bend it to our will in a way. So we are going to be able to use this to kind of cheat without having to worry about going to the documentation so much to be able to see or do what we want to do. So while, when we actually start actually coding here, um, you wanna be aware of another window here. So if I go to window, uh, you wanna look at this console window, you wanna make sure you have access to this because a lot of the outputs or the print prints, uh, print output is gonna go inside of that console window. It may not even come here, it's gonna go inside of that console window. Uh, ex, uh, external to this window here. So once you click on that window, you will get a second window that pops up like this. And that will show all that information there. But when we get there, you uh, I'll point it out that you need to actually look inside of the console window. And I, I call it the console because in Windows you will have the console, but really it's a terminal window. I think they even call it, they call it console here, but it is a terminal window. 
which is a console window. But the problem is that you don't want to get confused with this console window and that console window. Those are two different things. So in this console window, we'll still do output. So let's do our first hello world. If I were to say print, and this is uh, Python code, put it in quotes and I say hello world, what you will see is a printout of hello world, you see. So that's the output of this function here called print. It takes a string and it prints hello world. So let me go ahead and clear that out. So let's look at how we can actually uh, get some of the properties that we need in order to code. Right now, uh, I don't have anything selected, so I'm going to select this cube here and I'm going to press N on the keyboard. It's going to open up this transform view. It gives me the transform of this cube right here. If I were to put my mouse over this X and I were to scroll left and right or put my mouse over the Y, as you can see, it's moving that cube in those particular locations. The only thing here, and yours may be this way too because we didn't change it. When I put my mouse over the X, it says location of the object, but really there's more information I want to know. I want to know that BPY information, that you know, that in-depth information that's going to be printed out here for when I'm coding. So let's go ahead and change the fact that this is not showing us more information when we put our mouse over it. Um, we'll change the property so that way it does show us more information. So just to be sure that I, I don't have anything already loaded in here or changed, I'm going to go here to file and I'm going to go here to defaults. I'm going to go ahead and load factory settings here just so that um, there is uh, we all are on the same page. So now we have the factory settings here. So now uh, a lot of times you want to set up your environment here in a way that where where you can actually see things a little bit more like if you couldn't see this and most of that information and including the information that we want when we hit N here and we want that information to show more here. We have to go to file. I'm sorry, edit and under edit, we're going to go to preferences and you can change your interface scale here. So let's say if it's uh 1.0 we can go 1.2 and that's going to change the size of the script now I'm changing mine simply so you can see it a little bit more but really I like mine a bit smaller so the main thing we want here is changing this Python tooltip right here and that's going to allow us to um, I'm going to go ahead and save the preferences really quick that's going to allow us to go here click in and now you notice what it says under there it says object.location uh, BPY dot data objects cube location zero that's what we actually want and so make sure you are able to do that within that properties or preferences remember we have to go here at edit and then we go to preferences here and we're under interfaces and under interfaces we're selecting that tooltip and under interfaces we're selecting that tooltips option there and so while we're here, uh, when we were navigating, where I did a little bit of navigating here, I do like the fact that we can go here to navigation and change this to allow us to orbit around the selection here. So that's one thing you're going to want to do. You can change all of these things, the trackball, the orbit sensitivity, and that sort of stuff. You can actually test them out and feel, feel your way through it. Make it your own in a way. Make it feel good for you. So the next thing we want to do inside of this these preferences is go here to the systems tab and we want to change this undo to about 100 you know because we know we're gonna be making some mistakes now the limit to this is 256 and 100 does take up more memory so maybe you know you can go a little bit less than 100 depends on your system but 100 seems pretty good for me some people may even try 50 or 75. Just raise it past what it actually was when you first put it in default. So now we go down here to the save and load. And here, the recent files, it shows you 10 recent files. You can go ahead and expand that to something like 25. Click enter. Sorry, 25. Um, the maximum is 30. So if I try to go past 30, can't go past 30. You can leave it like this. I mean, it allows you to go way, you know, back on some project that you started a long time ago. So this is probably good too. So now over here on the left-hand side, you'll see save, save preferences, that little star there. That star means uh, nothing's been saved. 
So if you look over here to the left, you see the save preferences. That little star there means nothing has been saved. So I'm going to go ahead and save that to make sure I have all that stuff set. And I can go ahead and close it from there. So the first thing we want to do is, before we do anything, we want to go ahead and save this project here. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Save. And you can choose where you want. Mine is going to be in this folder right here. I'm going to start a new folder by clicking on this icon right here. clicked it too many times so I'm just going to delete that one go back here and then I am going to right click and rename this I'm gonna put script uh, actually I don't want to do that because that would mean is scripts by itself I'm just gonna say There we go. Python and Blender tests. I definitely know what that is. So now I'm going to go down here and change this uh, file name from untitled.blend to um, so Blender and Python 001. Let me uh, make sure that's capital and let me camel case this so that way we can read it from a distance. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this file. So now that we have that out of the way, we can now go over this and look at the attributes here. And it says that this is an object location and that the the code under there is how it actually moves it. That's the actually Python code down there. I can literally just hit control C and go down here and hit control V and it'll tell me what that number is. So I'm just going to move this around. So watch this. My mouse is over this. I'm going to hit control C again. I'm going to go down here, hit control V and it's basically taking, um, taking this information that's in here and is copying it inside of the console. But what if I want to actually take that code that it's showing me here. So if I go here, if you look at that, it says bpy.data.objects. Well, I can actually directly copy it from here, but if you if I move this, it's also going to show me that down here inside of this window. So I can just select the one that I want and hit control C, go back inside of my console, hit control V, and now it pasted that code directly in my console. I can change this around. Let me put that at, at zero. I'm going to uh, go hit backspace here. I'm going to hit zero there and I'm going to hit enter. Now watch the cube here at the top. Once I hit enter, it ran that code here and it moved the cube to zero. I can actually use the uh, up arrow to bring my previous statement back and hit uh, maybe change that to something like 10. And I hit enter and as you can see, it moved off screen to 10. I can go ahead and drag that over here. <clears throat> Move to 10. I'm going to put this out so we can see a little bit better. And then I can hit the up space to go back to zero and hit enter and it's back at zero. But now we're actually coding using uh, Python and uh, Blender's script here to be able to make something to move around. We can actually do this for animation and a whole host of things, but as you can see, it's opening up, it'll open up a lot of doors to you when you actually want to make things come to life or even making apps. You know, the, the, the sky's the limit once you start learning how to use code with traditionally 3D uh, applications or visual effects applications or even office applications. So let's say if I wanted to actually get this cube's X position, <clears throat> like, like what's here, right? I'm putting my mouse over here, you can see what it says, but really I can go down here and I can hit my up arrow and change that location to dot X. And I can say dot X equals one and I'm hit enter and look, it moved in the X position. So can you think of another one that you can use? If you can use X, then guess what? You can probably also check out Y and move it over that way. And if you can move Y, you already guessed it. You can move Z, as you can see there. And we can change all of these back using the previous one that we did to zero. And that's just going to be that X location. And then we can change all the other ones. So let's say if I were to look at this one, 
you'll see that it says cube and it has location one. So if I were to say down here, if I were to open that up again and I would say one is at zero. And then if I were to say two is at zero. <clears throat> and so basically zero, one, two is an array and that array actually has X, Y, and Z in there. So zero is X, uh, one is Y and two is Z. So knowing that this is an array, knowing that the X, Y, and Z axis actually goes into an array, also knowing when I put my mouse over here, that that, that object's cube dot location, location itself is an array. And uh, when you see that one or that zero in there, it's simply accessing elements of that array. And the array obviously has three elements in there. With that said, I can actually put all three elements in one shot. So I can say that equals, let's say if I want to say five, two, five, uh, two, four, and I hit enter. Now I've moved that in three different axes in one command because I understand that this is an array and we've already experienced that up here when we did the zeros, when we did the X, Y, and Z's. And now when we're doing the full array here that has all three components in there. So now you see here I have one, two, four, and up here I have one, two, four. So we'll always be able to confirm something based off of what we put here or confirm something based off of what we put here in code. So yeah, that, that's pretty cool. But here's another cool thing about what Blender does and how it really wants you to use the code and be able to do whatever you want with this code. Um, if I wanted to delete this, right, I can go ahead and hit the delete key. That's true. But I can also use it in code, just like I did here. So if I were to go to, let's say, like, um, let's say I'm going to go to object and I'm going to go down here to delete. My mouse is over delete. And you can see the Python code below that. And the Python code is because we actually put those, those tool tips there so we know that that's why that's there. If we didn't put the tooltips there, we probably wouldn't even see it. So I'm going to hit Control C with my mouse over delete. And then I'm going to hit Control V to paste it here. And look at that. It pasted that code from the menu directly in there. So if I were to hit Enter, it needs to know what object I want to delete. So let's try it again. So I'm just going to click on Delete. And then I am going to select this right here. And now I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it deleted that object. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. And so now I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Let's see what happens. If I don't select it, I hit enter. I hit enter. It cancels it because there's no object selected. It doesn't really know what, what you're asking it to do. So I'm going to select this object, hit delete. Uh, right here and it deletes so instead of undoing that let's go ahead and add another object so I'm gonna go here to add I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'm gonna go here to cube and you can see all those other objects there you're, you were able to add you should experiment with those whenever you have a chance but for right now we're we'll use the cube again and there we have our cube so how can we use all of these different tricks in one if if I were to um, hold on uh, I think I made a mistake and deleted it again. All right, uh, let me clear this console. Uh, let me go ahead and add another object. Mesh and cube. So let's say if I wanted to just, I'm going to move this in some random location. So I'm just going to hit hold down G and move this around and then release that. I click there. So now I move it in some random location. So let's say I move it in this location and I wanted these numbers in there and I wanted to run that where I had all of these, you know, uh, I just wanted to do it as one array. You don't want to have to keep going up here typing each one. So if you put your mouse over this location here, let's say I'm just going to put it right over this. I'm going to hit Control Alt C. Okay, and then I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to paste it and you look at what it did. Control-Alt-C 
copied that location as an object itself and not each individual one and it gave me that location here which I'm able to use all I need to do at this point is just change these here and basically There we go. I had a underscore there. There we go. I was going to say what in the world happened, but I had an underscore there. So that's why that gave me that error. I didn't know what code I was talking about. So now if I were to take this G and move this around in some weird place, I can actually run this code and put it exactly where it once was. I'm going to go here and clear all. Now, if you just want to copy, you just only want one of these uh, parameters here, you can just put your mouse over it. Um, and hit Control Alt Shift and C. Control Alt Shift and C, and then you go down here, and then you can paste it there. And you see, it's just getting that one location, that direct location there. Uh, now, from here, I can make that equals anything I want. But let's say I just wanted to not make it equal anything. I just wanted the Y position or the X position. I can hover, hover my mouse over it, Control, Alt, Shift, and C to copy that. And now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit Control, V to paste it. And if I hit Enter, it's just going to tell me now, instead of me putting equals, it's going to tell me that position. And as you can see here, it gives me that exact position here. I'm going to go to Console and clear all of that. So control C will copy the value. So I'm gonna put my mouse over here, control C and paste it. it. That's just the value. Control C will give me the value. And uh, up here, so control Alt and C. So I'm, I'm back here, my mouse is right over this X. Control Alt and C will now copy that entire location. And I'm going to paste it there so it has the location, X, Y, and Z locations. And then uh, when I come over here, if I hit Control, Shift, Alt, and C. Let's see. Control, Shift, Alt, and C. That's going to copy the operator. So I'm just going to hit Control, V to paste that down. Hold on. I might, I'm not even clicking this right. Let me do this again. So I'm going to go back up here. So now I just go here and I'm going to hit Control, Shift, Alt, and C. And then I'm just going to hit Control, V down here. And that's just going to give you the operator. And remember, from the operator, I can hit equals and put whatever number I want up in there. Or I can just hit enter and it will give me the location directly. Now the main function or module we'll be using is going to be BPY and it's going to be uh, along with uh, like you see here dot context dot data or dot OPS um, throughout this course throughout everything that we do. So the main thing you need to know about BPY is that it is giving you access to uh, Blender everything that's in Blender the Blender data whether it's input output it really doesn't matter all the classes that we need and that's why we access BPY and so it's almost like if you were in Python without Blender you wouldn't be using BPY because there would be no need you're not really accessing Blender but we are using BPY because we're using Python inside Blender and we need access to everything Blender has and the main reason why we have access to it here is because it's actually by nature inside of Blender embedded inside of the console if we were doing this outside of blender we would have to import it ourselves um, so that way we, we can have access to the blender uh, functions and modules and that sort of stuff so what does that mean that means as long as we are here inside of this console window we don't have to import bpy because it's already imported but we were making an external script let's say like something that's going to run from outside in that like when we make something here we're going to have to import that ourselves to be able to use bpy because we don't want to have to run scripts inside of this console and then have to rerun the script all the time. I mean, that would be foolish.
we want to be able to make a script that actually can make our menus and do stuff on its own. Another person can install the script or use it in their application without actually having to have the same project file that we have. And this is how you're going to make plugins and that sort of stuff inside of Blender or even do a lot more than that using this sort of technique. So really we're gearing towards making more scripts that's external than actually using this console to actually run scripts. We can use this console to test scripts out, but not necessarily to think of long term. This will be long term when we make our scripts external. So for instance, if we were to start a new file, I'm going to click on new here. I have a new file here. I have this line here. I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to type import and I'm going to type BPY. And that's how we're going to import all the, you know, all the classes that we need from, uh, from Blender. Uh, and also we will notice that if you look down here, BPY is used extensively, especially under context. We're looking at the fact that whenever we are doing anything inside of Blender, um, it's going through that BPY. So let's look at the difference between the DP, BPY, really not that much of a difference. So if I'm, I'm just going to go up here, and if you look here, this uh, cube right here is called cube.001. That's the name of this cube. If you look at this code here, I just used my up arrow key from the previous things that we did. It says BPY is going through the data module and is accessing objects, the objects name the cube.001, which is the same name here, right? Is accessing its location and is accessing its Z position. Okay, so we can actually do it. And if I hit enter, it's going to give me that Z position. However, if I were to do the same thing and I were to change this from data to context, and then I would say dot active. So this is based on what is currently active that active object and I don't really need the name for the active object that's just whatever is selected if I sele do that and I hit enter it gives me the same thing but this is based on context meaning anything I select is going to give me that information um, if I were to go here and add myself a circle uh, have that circle selected I'm just going to go here, dot active object, and as you can see, it's giving me zero. I'm going to select this and go back to that active object, and it gives me this number. So the context actually allows you to run a code on anything based on its context, meaning the X position of any context. If you were to use this, you can't do that. It has to be specific when it comes to uh, the object's data uh, information. So now let's look at the BPY objects, I mean, um, BPY um, OPS. So if I were to type dot BPY dot OPS, and this is going to give me a ton of access to the operators. So operators like um, a good example would be what I just did when I added this right here. Let me do it again. I'm going to go to objects. I'm, go I'm sorry, add. Uh, let's go to mesh and let's go to um, let's go to cylinder. And when you go down here, you'll notice that it says uh, BPY dot OPS mesh. We're using that operator. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste that over here and you can see that that operator is giving me access to a lot of different things including the operation of creation and so now you know the three different components that we'll be using are uh, using the BP I'm sorry I said BPS but I mean BPY if I made a mistake and say BPS I mean BPY so the BPY uh, module gives us access to a lot of different things but you just need to know the main difference between the data the context and the OPS so now let's get to the meat and bones of most of the stuff that we're going to do. And right here, these are just tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our first script. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and X out of this, and I'm going to unlink that. And I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to go to new here, and I'm going to name this by clicking on this. And the main thing about names is that you want to make sure the name is something that you remember. Because this, this, this file is something you will be using. You will be sending to other people. Other people will be using. And you want this file to say what it actually does. So you want to put something like add... Uh, and it doesn't have to be all caps. Um, add sphere. So 
So I'm gonna put add, add sphere with mods. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm ready to go. So from the last, last uh, information we had, we know we're making some script and we know we're making Python script, but we also know that we need to get access to Blender. So guess what? We have to import what? B, P, Y. So let's go over here and clear out our scene. I'm gonna hit A. It selects everything. I'm gonna hit delete to delete everything in the scene. And let's start from scratch. So now the first thing we're going to do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit N to hide that menu right there. Um, I'm going to hit uh, Shift S and I am going to put the cursor to World Origin. So that way I make sure that the cursor is right there in the center. So now let's get the code that we want for our script. Our script says add sphere with uh, modifiers. Okay, so the first thing I think the script should be able to do is add a sphere. I want to go ahead and uh, clear this out for a second and uh, I'm going to get the code from down here once I add the sphere. So I'm going to go up here to add mesh and let's use a UV sphere and that is the first code that I'm going to have selected right down here. I'm going to select it, hit control C, go over here, hit a few times down and paste it right in that spot. Okay, so now we have this sphere here. Uh, I'm gonna select this sphere and I'm gonna delete it, hit the delete key, and I'm gonna move this um, from here to some other place over here. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna hold shift and hit the right mouse button so I can move that center portion. And, and I'm gonna go to add mesh and I'm gonna add another UV sphere in that spot. So what you want to be aware of is just like when I move this around here, and let's let's look at this really quick. I'm going to select that, hit Control C, and I'm going to make another area and paste that in there. You'll notice now that wherever I move that, it's adding that within that locations area, like the location area here, this location here. So these are just parameters inside of this function here. So the mesh has a fun a, a procedure called primitive UV sphere add and it takes this parameter here this argument and it takes a location here and so this is what we are using here now you can do this so right now it's in this location if I were to just remove this here I'm just gonna select this and I'm gonna hit save so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna save this script just in case something happens and it crashes And so now I'm going to run this script. First, let me delete this. I'm going to select, I'm just going to delete it, hitting uh, the X key and then hitting delete. And then I'm going to run this script and look where it put it. It put it right back in 00, zero even though the cursor is here. So our code ran perfectly. Now, one thing you need to know about saving is that you need to understand that the Blender and this text is two separate things. So you need to save your Blender file. So save your Blender file wherever you are saving it. And then under here, you want to go under text, save as, and you can decide where you want to save it. It's saving in that same folder that I had before, which is fine by me. I'm just going to click on save. And now you can see down here exactly where that file was saved. So let's quickly look at some meaningful uh, code that we can actually write. Um, you want to be able to place an object wherever my cursor is, right? So. I'm going to first go ahead and type a variable here and let's call that variable my cursor location uh, and that's going to be equals to bpy and that's going to be context. Now the reason why I'm, I'm basically typing this out uh, and there's a way we can actually copy it from the scene but you want to learn to copy these things, copy these things out because it's going to actually make you a better coder because you can think while you are typing. And you'll have a better sense of the code later on. So as you can see here, I have my context. I'm going for the scene. That's going to be the context. And I want the cursor's location. And then from there, I'm going to have to have three variables. That's going to actually hold that location so I can use it later. So as we learned before, we have an X, Y, and Z. 
x cursor for the cursor location. So I'm taking this variable right here, which is uh, that cursor uh, location, and I'm taking the cursor's location dot x, and I'm putting it in here. And basically, I'm going to do this same thing for all the other ones. And again, you're going to want to actually type this out because it's going to make you much better at coding. So let's go ahead and look at this code to add a UV uh, mesh, UV sphere. Add that sphere there. We go down here. We copy that. I'm gonna paste it here. And now from here, I can go ahead and actually add that uh, X, Y, and Z inside of this area. Now, if you want more options than what's here, let's say if you wanted to change the ring or something like that, if you really wanted to go deeper into what this mesh primitive can do, we are interested in this, right? So I'm just gonna copy that, close this down. Let me go here. And so this is not just for Python, actually. That's actually for Blender and Python. So I'm gonna select that, uh, go here, paste that in there, hit enter. So here's the one we're actually looking for. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you'll see here is the code that we are actually looking for. I can actually go ahead and copy this. I'm just going to take this from here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to bring that down here. And I'm going to replace that with this here. Now. Uh, this goes off the screen, so I'm going to go up here and hit word wrap so it wraps around so I can see everything. And then in this location is where I can put my X cursor. X, Y, and Z. So now when I run the code... Let me give you guys an example. If I were to take this code and I were to run this code by itself, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit X to delete that. I'm just going to run this code here by itself. I'm going to run that code. Oh, hold on, I got an error here. Let's see. So this is why we were talking about that console window before. Oh, so I have an issue with that cursor X. Let me look at that. Oops, I'm going to minimize that. Oh, of course, because I didn't change this here. I have to change these back if I was going to delete those. Okay. So now I'm going to run it again. And there it is. It went to zero, but it didn't go to where the 3D cursor is, where the mouse would be. So I'm going to hold shift and hit the right mouse button anywhere I want and I can run this again and you can see it's not gonna go where that cursor is it's gonna go straight to the center and it's only gonna go where this is because that does not follow the mouse now if I were to undo this and go back to this point and then I'm gonna hit X delete the cursors over here I'm gonna hit run So this one's at the cursor, but it's not on the cursor because I want you guys to look at my code for a second and I want you to go ahead and tell me what's wrong with my code. I'll give you a few seconds because this video's going on long. And this is why you have to you have to understand that typing it is very important. I really want you guys to look at it and just tell me what, what you think. Ah, you see it, don't you? You see it that I have X cursor, and this happens a lot. This is why I wanted to point this out. When you are copying and pasting, you run into these issues. So I have X cursor here, X cursor here, because I did not change this one to Y when I actually went back and uh, undid the last thing. But So we have X, Y, and Z. Now when I run this again, the cursor is there. I run it again, and it'll pop one on the cursor. I hold Shift and right mouse button. 
it'll go there shift right mouse button and go there and we have our first script that actually is something that we can use when we are actually modeling 3d I'm gonna hit a for selecting all and hit X to delete all of those So we've learned a lot in this video. We learned how to set everything up. We learned a little bit about the scripting area over here. We learned about copying code. We learned how to make our own code and we learned how to save our script separately from the actual file or the Blender file. So you want to go ahead and make sure you save this file. Go to text and save the, the script here that you have there. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.